Understanding how to choose the right behavioral test for your experiment is crucial. In this video, we will help you understand how to choose the right test for your research. Let's start by looking at tests for learning and memory. There are a variety of mazes and operant tests that can be used to examine learning and memory in rodents. Today I will explain the most common tests used and what they measure. All of the tests mentioned in this video are available through Amusa. If you have questions about a particular test or would like to learn more about pricing, please connect with an expert today. The first test I am going to talk to you about today is the T-Maze. The T-Maze is also called the Spontaneous Alternation Test and is used to measure exploratory behavior in rodents. This test is based off of the fact that rodents typically prefer to visit a new arm of the maze rather than a familiar one. The T-Maze can be used to measure spatial working memory by placing a reward at the end of one arm of the maze and then alternating the reward. The animal must learn that the arm that was previously not rewarded now is. Next is the Y-Maze. The Y maze is very similar to the T maze with the exception that each arm is evenly spaced. The Y maze is thought to be slightly easier for rodents to learn compared to the T maze. Maze systems are extremely useful for measuring hippocampal related memory processing in both intact animals and in disease models like Alzheimer's. In addition to the standard T maze and Y maze, at Amusa we offer a unique free maze system that enables researchers to easily design and reconfigure up to eight different mazes in one, giving you much more bang for your buck. The next test I'm going to talk to you about is fear conditioning. Fear conditioning is a type of associative learning task in which experimental test subjects learn that a previously neutral stimulus is associated with an aversive stimulus, like a foot shock. This learning is evidenced by anticipated freezing in response to the previously neutral cue, even in the absence of the foot shock. With fear conditioning, animals learn to both fear the stimulus and the context that the stimulus is presented in. This test can be used to measure hippocampal dependent contextual memory, as well as fear processing in the amygdala. The next test I'm going to talk to you about is Condition Place Preference. This is an operant test used to measure the motivational states that are connected to objects or experiences. You can measure both preference and avoidance by recording the amount of time the animal spends in the arena with the associated stimulus. This test is most commonly used to measure the rewarding and aversive effects of drugs of abuse. For these experiments, drugs are introduced in specific contexts and then the animal is tested on how much time they spend in that particular context in the absence of the drug. Finally, I am going to go over a few examples of tests that are commonly used to measure addiction and neuropsychiatric disorders like schizophrenia. The first test is the startle response or prepulse inhibition test. Prepulse inhibition, also known as a reduction in the startle response or PPI, is a phenomenon in which a weak stimulus, the prepulse, can suppress the startle response to a subsequent stronger startle stimulus, the main pulse. Impairments in prepulse inhibition are thought to underlie impairments in sensory motor gaining, which is a common impairment seen in schizophrenia. Typically, the way it works is that an animal is placed into a cylindrical chamber and a starting acoustic stimulus is played. The latency of the animal's startle response to both the prepulse and the pulse can then be quantified. The final task is the five choice serial reaction time task. The five choice serial reaction time task is commonly used to test attention and impulsivity in rodents. This task is typically carried out in an operant chamber like our touch panel operant chamber. 
the chamber must be equipped with at least five holes. In this task, animals must correctly identify which of five holes has been illuminated via a nose poke. The time that the hole is illuminated can be shortened so that the animal must pay close attention in order to make the correct response. Between trials, the experimental test animal must also inhibit responses to other holes until the next hole is illuminated. This task is quite useful for animal models of neuropsychiatric diseases like schizophrenia and autism. If you have questions about any of these tests or how you can start running them in your lab today, please connect with an expert or send us an inquiry. We look forward to helping you with your research. Thank you.